Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's. In today's episode we're looking at a Hater 41 auto drive that I picked up off a of Facebook marketplace just the other week. Uh, this machine was um, came in as not running, however since literally getting it indoors, uh, not indoors, in the garden and putting a new plug in it, uh, the machine fired up. It does sound very very ropey and it's uh, mucking about what have and there's literally no paint on this deck whatsoever. So it's going to be coming in for a bit of a paint job. I have a um, somebody lined up, hopefully, that could be interested in it if I can get it done before the weekend. Um, so this machine, as I say, is nothing to look at. It would certainly not sell on the local marketplace at all or would not fetch any sort of money in the current situation it is in. And I'm hoping literally just to give it a quick little service and a tin of paint, and um, total cost of that's going to be around about, I would say, £30 uh, to, do the, to do the complete makeover start to finish. And uh, hopefully we can get this machine looking a little bit better than what it is now and uh, get it moved on outside and give someone a nice little sort of mower for the season. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30pm UK time. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's transform this Hater 41 auto drive. Right, let's drag it out. Here it is here. As I say, <laughs> there's nothing to look at. Let me grab a plug because there's no plug in it. Um, I did literally just whip a plug in over the week and uh, it, it fired on up, so uh, that's cool. So let me just put a plug in very, very quickly. Just gonna bang an old plug in it for now. It, uh, it didn't start on the plug it had in it. Um, I've ordered some more plugs, they'll be coming. It looks like this must have come near the seaside, this one. This is rusty as anything. Obviously the decks don't rust because they're aluminium. Any fuel in there? Yeah, a little bit. The fuel doesn't look, doesn't look good either. But it does prime. Well, there you go. It didn't run at all when I picked it up. As you can see, smoky, horrible, gnarly. It done it very good. Let me give a bit of a close-up look at it. Just to get a bit of a better look of what I've got uh, what I've got coming up on it. Just so you can just to get a better view. There you go. Let me just move this old tripod over a touch just so you get a, a better shot. That's better. There you go. It yeah, done it very nice. The best part on this whole um, mower is actually the grass bag, which I got off of eBay just the other day. So it's got a new donor grass bag. But the rest of it, yeah, it's gnarly. Paint flaking off everywhere. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll start with that. Let's get it in the shed, get it up on the bench and make a start. Okay, so we're gonna make a start. I think the first thing we'll do is remove the throttle off of here. It don't need it on there. These are, uh, governed by themselves so they don't need a throttle a throttle connection on there that's just extra i don't know why they, why they put them on here they're not needed take that straight off i've got a 10 mil to remove off of the pull cord assembly as well to bring that down now the engine will be coming off because i want to um Bear with. I want to um, spray the deck. Because the decks are aluminium on these, um, no rust. Uh, the pull cord needs doing. The pull cord is absolutely shot to bits, so I'm too, too small. I've got a big spring all the way down there. I want to show you that first before we do anything. And this is why someone has, a, has put a throttle box on it, I believe. I've just spotted something out the back here, which looks, looks kind of good. This is one for you, Bruce. 
the fiddle fairies have struck. Look at that. <laughs> I've never ever seen a governor spring like it. Oh, let me show you that one. That's a, that's a new one on me. Check that puppy out. That's a proper governor spring. Hoo -hoo. Oh, that, that arm don't even move. Oh, she's a proper governor spring. Um, so that's all got to come off. I've never ever seen it. That's a bed spring, I think. Never ever seen anything like that in my entire life. <laughs> that's brilliant. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take a photograph of that and put that on my Instagram. <laughs> you might really see that. I uh, love that one. Uh, photograph. Proper setup, that is. Um, HT lead off. Oof. Let's um, change over to a. Uh, uh, I want a 3 16th, which I just had now. Oh, I, I did put it back, didn't I? Yeah, I did put it back. Um, 3 16th. Take the pull cord assembly off. So I want to see what other surprises we have in stock or in store. So that comes off. Oh my lord. That's proper. That's a proper old spring, that is. So these are a new set of garden springs. All oh, that's going to be painted up. Um, got an 8mm with me somewhere. 8mm on there. So we remove the the rear, um, the rear guard, that'd be a quarter mic, not that eight mil. That'd be a quarter, which I think is that one there off the top mid. Right, next one down. Too big. That one. So I'm gonna remove the uh, dead man's handle cover so I can inspect the, the switch later on. That goes in there, that's absolutely filthy. Okay, this is a lush one. Um, let's put that eight mil back on there so I don't lose that. Ugh, then I want me um, my three sixteenths, which I just had a minute ago. I'll do it that, people. I'll put that Dane somewhere. That's right, it fell on the floor, didn't it? So we'll undo that one there. That'll take the tank off. I want a half inch to go on as well. And my half inch isn't there because I went out yesterday and did a did a, a mobile job for a fella who's on crutches and got COPD. Um, I took my tool with me. Here it is there, there's my half inch. Let me take that off. That's got to come out. That can go in there. All my bits and keep them together. I can now remove the tank assembly. That's got to be overhauled. Uh, we take this governor spring off, or whatever you want to call it. It's not a governor spring, well, that's what it's been acting to do. Look at the size of that thing, look. Look at the size of it, it's absolutely solid. There's no way in God's earth that's going to move anything. All right, so now, look, that moves, all right. That's supposed to move. That can go in a bin, it's no good for man or beast. We've got this, we, Wash the O-ring and washer. It goes on a tank. That'd also be a reason why it wasn't running right. Quite fuel smells like a something you find in the NHS urine department. Uh, that can come off as well. Um, I've got to remove a dead man. I've got to take the spark plug off. I mean, I'm going to cover this whole machine in, in a, a, get an air compress off, and then. Um, just take the oil out. So let me get the oil taken out and I can be back in two ticks. Right, we're now underneath. I've taken the blade off. Uh, the blade actually is a, is, is, is a not horrendous, but uh, I, it, it could be better. Um, but that'll all be um, sharpened and balanced later on in the show. Um, so the blade's now off. Air filter's got to have a new, new air filter in there. So now I'm gonna try and do the bolts. I've started this one already, the engine bolts. There's one. We've got three of these to do. If I can get them on there. Now what you don't want to do is ram, it, ram these puppies off. Otherwise it's just going to be sort of game over. So if it doesn't go on to begin with, and just get a little bit of persuasion, 
and just make sure you get a good seat on there. And you might have to tighten the bolts up first. There it goes. Hopefully we haven't broke nothing. No. There goes bolt number two. I keep bashing my mic. I don't know if you boys, are, you boys and girls are picking up on that. I don't know. Got one over here. This is a quite a rusty, quite a rusty old mower. This is. It's lucky it's got an aluminium deck. Last engine bolt. Hopefully it'll come off. It was the last one's always the worst. There you go. Told you. I don't want to come out. So break out the breaker bar. Always the last one on it. Always going to snap on you. Try that bit of a breaker bar. There you go. It's just not enough power on my D walk to shift that now. By the time you guys see this, see this video, my birthday would have been and gone. And I've asked Mrs. Pete for a half inch drive, which she's uh, agreed to buy me for my birthday, which is very nice of it. So I've got a nice D walk half inch coming. Um, just uh, this little tiny quarter inch is just not man enough. Just not man enough. And my air impact gun has given up, given up the ghost. Right, so with that all now done, let's move these sockets out of the way. I'm starting to clip a few sockets here. And tools down. That should be the engine now able to come off. Um, I've disconnected the, uh, the dead man, but don't forget these are um, a side drive machine. So you've got to remove the belt from the side drive on these. Because they've got a little tiny, little tiny, tiny, tiny PTO shaft. Now there's no oil in this machine, so we can tip it up as much as we like. Right, so I've got to take, now the engine's been taken, uh, disconnected. Um, I have just slipped the um, the belt off the back roller um, just by removing the bolt down here and sliding it off. I've just got this one turning, which is nice. I don't know if the one's going to turn yet, as of yet. It would be nice if it would, because you need to take this off to get to the uh, PTO. Now, if this snap, I'll have, to, I'll have to draw these out. I hope this one comes out. It's going to come. Look at that. I didn't, I, do you know what? I didn't think that was going to come. Really, I didn't. I was dreading doing that. Good size um, screwdriver in there. Biggest one you've got. I'm about to see that come off. That's cool. That little handle then will lift that. He says, everyone is just seized. <laughs> really badly seized up. Look at that. Okay, now there should be a little spring there as well. Look, don't lose that little spring. That all goes in together. That, that's all just gummed up. That all just wants a bit of love, a bit of grease and oil in there. So we keep that bit together. Don't lose that mick. So now I can move this engine over slightly. And that'll just give me enough room just to slip that belt off the PTO and out comes the belt. And then the engine will then come off via the height control. Do that. Not designed to be getting in here like that. I want to put that height control back on so I can uh, move that PTO shaft over. Just so rusty on here. I might have to take that um, circlip off that height adjustment. This end on the front, There's a little tiny circlip on here. I think we'll remove that just for ease. Not that I wanted to, but. And then take that little bar out of there. And then we can free that bar up there, you see. But that's all tension sprung. There we go. 
goes. All right, that's a bit better. That's gonna be a bit more, bit more freedom now to move it up and over. I don't want to break these because uh, they've been another part we've got to replace. So, right, engine is now off. That's all will be cleaned up, sprayed up, brought back looking like new. I'm just going to put that bar back on that height adjustment rod just so it keeps everything true and balanced up for me. As you can see, all this paint is just, it's just coming off, man. So um, I'm going to leave the drive cable in place in situ, but what I'm going to use now is some um, some paint stripping formula. I've got this stuff here, which is what I use, and lots of other people use it too. Mr. Martin Butler uses it. It's good stuff. Ah, and it's called uh, Power Strip. So I'm going to be using. First of all, I'm going to go around with just a bit of, bit of gunk off and whatever, have a tied up, scrape off what I can. And then we put some power strip into a little tiny Chinese tub, and then we'll um, uh, give it a, a quick little um, paint strip, and then we'll come back once that's once that's activated, and I'll, I'll let you see how, how I'm getting on. Right, I've had a bit of a clean up where I can. Um, still a bit of paint flaking that is coming off, um, but it will shift a lot easier with um, a bit of this paint strip. So that's what I've got. You need to wear some gloves with this, people, because it does it do sting. It's good paint, the proper paint strip, you know. It's not a, it's not stuff to be uh, mucked about with. So keep it out of reach of uh, pets and uh, and kids. Uh, it's near, all right, near ground, near, near mother-in-laws. That's right, near them. Um, and keep it away from uh, everybody else. And all I'm going to do is just bring that in. And I find with this stuff, uh, liberal. Don't be shy with it. Put it on in all the areas where you've got paint going on. And that within, within minutes, this stuff will start to react with, um, with the paint that's on it. Anywhere we've got a bit of oxidization and the paint has start to lift, uh, th this stuff just takes that straight out. It does not muck about. And I have used it on other haters and it's not been very good because of the type of paint that's used. Uh, there's no damage to this deck, which is quite nice. So just liberally put it on. That muck about. It's always hard to get the paint off uh, around by where the uh, the engine bolts have been. That's always harder, and you'll see quite quickly that the paint starts to lift. Um, off the deck now isn't there's not a lot of paint on this machine it's as simple as that bits over there though um even leaving the wheels on there's, there's just not a lot of paint on it full stop and that stuff starts to react quite quick i think that'll probably be enough there's not a lot of paint on here i'm very very lucky and it's one it's one of the reasons why i actually picked this one up because literally it wouldn't take a lot to strip it down to get it um, up and run. Let me show you the paint starting to, starting to activate. There you see uh, the paint. Let me bring it light in a bit better. You see the paint start to bubble, start to lift already. That's how quick this stuff works. Okay, see that there? Start to lift. There's quite good stuff. However, there, there are other instances where I've seen this paint. Uh, this paint strip are not quite so good, but you know, each to their own. It's good for what I need it for. And literally all you then do is just gently but surely, you can just take it off. You can use a plastic scrape if you want to, but this, this deck's gotta be uh, sanded back a touch anyway, get rid of some of this oxidization. So let me get this, um, this deck scraped off. And when you come back, um, hopefully it'll be all scraped off, sanded back, looking a bit better. 
Right, there you have it. Um, all sanded back. There's just a few little tiny flakes. I've just got a nick off. Just a few little tiny bits and pieces. That's all. Literally just minute details. I'll get them done before I even consider spraying this. And once um, I've got these little tiny bits out, um, I'm going to take it outside. The weather's fantastic. And the undercoat on here will, uh, the primer, uh, will, will adhere absolutely beautifully in, in this weather. It's about, I don't know, it's about 24 degrees outside. So um, you need to make sure you get it all off though, because this, this has got paint stripper on it. So you need to make sure you get it all off and cleaned. So next time you see this um, little lawnmower deck, it'll be, probably be black. Um, I use a, uh, a black primer because um, that way it doesn't take quite so much of the green hater top coat to, um, to cover it. So this is all now done ready. Just a few tiny bits and pieces, like I say, just here and there, but um, I can pick them off and what have you. Just with my, I've been using a, um, my little drill with a little wire wheel, literally just like so, just to take it off. And it comes off of these. Um, but it all, it's all got to come off. So let me finish it off. I'll take it outside, give it a bit of a bit of a paint um, undercoat. I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's done. And then uh, we'll move on to the next process. All right, black undercoat is done. Say again, darling. No. So that's the black undercoat all now done. Uh, absolutely gorgeous day. So that won't take long to, to, to clean up at all. In fact, it's, it's diamond dries as soon as, it, as soon as it hit the deck. So yeah, happy with that. And then we can uh, start to apply the, uh, the top coats of uh, Hater Green. Right, uh, pull cord assembly, sprayed, uh, master. I've got to repair the stickers slightly. Uh, that's air box and uh, pull cord assembly. Engine's been blacked, uh, exhaust has been blacked, and the exhaust guard been silvered. Mrs. P's hanging the washing out. Hi, Mrs. P. She is. She's been shopping for Josh's birthday. Um, Hater, there it is there, Hater Green. That's the third and final coat done. It is slightly darker than what uh, it normally is, in my opinion. It does say Hater New Green on it, on a tin as well. So they might have changed the, uh, the recipe slightly. So um, that's the Hater Green now, third and final coat. Two coats of under primer. I've yet to do the handles, uh, but that'll dry off now for a little while before I bring it back in and plonk the engine back on top. So I'll see you in a bit. Right. So here it is so far. Um, I have sort of rushed it a bit, but then that's, that's just in my nature. Uh, I'm not one to have a machine on a bench for more than a day if I can help it. Um, time is money, people. Time is money. Uh, it's just the, way, it's just the way I am. I'm quite an impatient person, and I like to get, get stuff moving. So um, engine's been blacked, as I say. Uh, just sat and blacked this up. That's still wet. Um, in fact, the deck is still wet. Everything's still wet. Um, but I managed to get the deck back indoors and very carefully bolt the engine down without causing too much damage. Um, and anywhere I have just nicked, I've just got a bit of spray paint and just, just covered it over quick, so no problem there. Got to tighten up the back rollers, the belt's all been fitted. So next to go on will be the um, recoil assembly. I have checked the pull cord, actually pull cord is okay. Um, but uh, I thought it was, it was a bit short, but actually there's about six and a half feet on there, so that should be fine. So pull cord to go on next, just push that on top, bolt that down one, two, three. Um, and then what I might do then is take the lawnmower back off very carefully, put it outside to sun bake, and then, now the engine was actually running to a degree, but we don't yet know because of their massive garden spring. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna put some oil in this machine, and I'm gonna put a carburetor back on, put it all back together, and just try and fire it up, see how it's running with some new garden springs because it had them big springs on before, so the car better may not need doing. We shall see. Um, I'm going to remove the throttle as well. I don't need a throttle on these. These are self-governing because of that. And um, don't need to have a throttle on here, so that's fine. So, yeah, let's do that. I'll be back in two ticks. Right, so let's uh, crack on a little tiny bit. Got me, uh, me, in, uh, me exhaust here, which is, uh, can go on there. That's, nice. that's been nice and blacked up. Now, I'm not a fan of the paint I actually got last time. I got like, bought like a barbecue um, blacking paint. It's, uh, I'm not a fan, to be fair. It's very, very, what goes on very, very watery. You've got to get about 55 coats just to get it to do anything. So I should be losing that one in the future. That one on. Got 
tighten the lugs down in a bit, no, no biggie. Transfer over to a, a 3 8 I've got an exhaust guard to put on. This has been nice and silvered, which will look the part. Loosely fit that one. And then I got uh, one here to do. I didn't like going in. Be a bit careful here, Mick, because stuff is still wet. Let's take you out. You didn't like going in there, did you? Let's put your brother in there. That's better. That's that one in. We can now fit the eight mil, or sorry, quarter. Short, no, it's eight mil. It is eight mil. Eight mil on the front of the exhaust guard. It's that little tiny bolt just there. Excuse head. Where's it going to go? It should go in there somewhere. That's that one. See it with jobbly. That looks better, doesn't it? That looks cool, we like that. Right, let me spin the machine round. Um, I've got to put the stick on the front yet as well, that's got to go on. Uh, but I'm just intrigued as to um, uh, this carburetor first with a spring. So let me spin it round and I'll come back. Right, so I'm just now fitting some uh, Gardner springs. Brand new, brand new ones. So the ones that had on it were absolutely shocking. So I've just done this one already, the big one. Uh, it goes onto this little tiny slot here and on back onto here. Now just remember, when you put these on, it must go on the front side of this loop, not on the back side, okay? If it's over this back side, it'll be too much tension. So the next one, simply, is a little tiny tab just here. Push it through the tab, okay, all the way through. Lift it up slightly and then just bend it, uh, pull it back, okay? Go gentle, because it is a, a very temperamental little spring. Like that, you see. So I know that's on there. And then the same with this one. All you do is you push it through the eyelet. Push it through the eyelet. Hook it and bring it back. And that's that one on as well. And you just hook it back onto that governor arm. And there you go. So that's now on. And as you can now see, that governor is now, is now moving exactly as it should do. So we're happy with that. Um, let me grab the fuel tank. Now, we're still a little way off yet from starting it because... Um, uh, I've got to put the, um, there's a little tiny plate here that stops the dust from getting in. That fuel doesn't actually smell too rancid. Uh, a bit of fresh fuel on there, we should be okay with a fork. Um, so let's just mount the tank. Let's hook the uh, carburetor on. That's it. That's all fitting nice now. Now it's all starting to come together, people. That one on there. don't feel like that wants to go on there very well. Yeah, it's lined up. Okay. Good, good. So I've got a little tiny bit of metal here. And all this is just a cover and just stops the dust from getting underneath. So that just slides down inside, like so, and hooks up there. And you want your little half inch bolt, which I have somewhere to hand. There it is. A little half inch bolt goes into there. And a little three eighths goes on the front of the carby. And then another three eighths, which is the one I was waiting for, will go uh, on the back of the recoil assembly. This one will go up here. That's that one in place. We can then just gently nick that one up and then grab a half inch and then gently run that bolt into place as well. That one's in. That one's on. Cool. Um, so now I'm going to put the air filter on. That's no biggie. You can just chuck it on top. Uh, and then put some oil in. I'll be back once the oil's gone in. 
Right, I'd say it's three quarters finished, people. Got a few fine tinkling bits to do to it, that's all. But we'll have it off the old bench. Carefully, carefully. It's near enough dry. I've got to um, adjust the drive. I think the drive is a bit too tight. I've got to do that. Let's just uh, drop that height adjustment down a bit. That's better. Oh, it's just, I think it was just caught up. That's good. So there it is. Compared to what it looked like about an hour and a half ago. Pretty good, me thinks. Let's get some fuel. And we'll uh, endeavour to fire it up, shall we? I've got a few bits to do to it yet, but for the video, perhaps the video, we call it a vid. Uh, I've got black handles and what have you. Let's put some fresh fuel in. Give it half a chance. Turn the old revs up a bit. And that's we'll all we get. Want it to uh, to run and drive. That's what we want. And I've got to tighten that handle up too. Bit of a job I've got to do. I've got to tighten all these handles up and make sure they run right because that, that one's a bit stiff. So um, I'll take them all off, clean them with a wire brush, all them, and what have you. So anyway, let's go for a fire up. I uh, want it to run and drive. So that's a bit quick. <clears throat> Mrs. P is going to do a head in when I smoke her washing out. So that's running a smidgen too fast. <clears throat> so we're going to slow, up, slow her down a bit. She's a bit quick. It might be a bit more governor work yet because um, it had them big springs put on it. And that'll only ever blow up if you were muck about a bit like that. What's occurring there? Yeah, it seems very, very tight. Let's pull that up. And that seems to be doing its thing. I was getting caught up just there somewhere. The might want a carburetor clean. It's getting caught up just there. It doesn't like that spring. Oh, I see. I gotcha. The spring has come round the, the back of that pigtail I was on about earlier on. Let's try that. Of a speed now, but it's got to stop smoking. It's got to stop smoking. So let me get a quick run, and I'll be back when it stopped. Okay, true to fashion, it's now uh, at about the right, the right speed.
done. There you go, 841 auto drive, now all up, running, fully serviced, blade sharp and balanced, new spark plug, new air filter, uh, I haven't put any pork on there, doesn't need it, uh, all change, uh, all good to go, new paint job, two, three coats of undercoat black primer and two or three coats of uh, top hater green black. I should now, I won't sew it for a couple of days, but I now sit outside in the beautiful sunshine and bake until that paint goes absolutely rock hard, and it does go rock hard too, and it is um, 4K uh, protective lacquer on there as well, so, That'll be super, super cool. And I think I already have someone lined up who's interested in it already. So I'm super, super happy with that. If you enjoyed this little video of Mixed Mode, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mode very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.